Human rights is, um, geez, that's a good question. Human rights. Well, that's a tough one. Wow. Um, I don't even know how to give that a definition. I would probably have to do a little bit of homework or something. Yeah, any right that I think any, just as a normal, you know, uh, human, any... The rights that humans have? Uh, oh, that's a very large debate. I think it's a very large debate. You can ask 20 people and you will give 20 different opinions. I don't know, it's a very complicated question. We just take it for granted that they're there, but we don't even consider what they are. Human rights are the rights you have simply because you're human. It's how you instinctively expect and deserve to be treated as a person, like the right to live freely, to speak your mind, and to be treated as an equal. There are many kinds of rights. Most apply to a certain group. But human rights are the only ones that apply to absolutely everyone, everywhere. That means kids. Old people, poor people, basketball players, garbage men, rappers, teachers, Africans, Indians, Albanians, Christians, Muslims, Kabbalists, atheists, your mom, your dad, your next door neighbor, and you all have the exact same human rights. In other words, they're universal. But the question remains, what are they? Name human, the human rights? What the human rights are? Um, the right to live. Um, equality between all peoples. Right to religion, the right to... Is there supposed to be a list somewhere I should be aware of? According to the United Nations, there are a total of 30 human rights, which are usually lumped together and called simply human rights. They're all listed out in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is the world's most widely accepted document on the subject. But it was a long time in coming. At first, there were no human rights. If you were in with the right crowd, you were safe. If you weren't, well... You weren't. But then a guy named Cyrus the Great decided to change all that. After conquering Babylon, he did something completely revolutionary. He announced that all slaves were free to go. He also said people had the freedom to choose their religion, no matter what crowd they were a part of. They documented his words on a clay tablet known as the Cyrus Cylinder. And just like that, human rights were born. The idea spread quickly to Greece, to India, and eventually to Rome. They noticed that people naturally followed certain laws, even if they weren't told to. They called this natural law, but it kept getting trampled on by those in power. Not until a thousand years later in England did they finally get a king to agree that no one can overrule the rights of the people, not even a king. People's rights were finally recognized, and they were now safe from those in power. Kind of. It still took a bunch of British rebels declaring their independence before the king got the point that all men are created equal. Which isn't to say he liked the idea, but he couldn't stop them. And America was born. The French immediately followed with their own revolution for their own rights. Their list was even longer, and they insisted that these rights weren't just made up. They were natural. The Roman concept of natural law had become natural rights. Unfortunately, not everyone was so thrilled. In France, a general named Napoleon decided to overthrow the new French democracy and crown himself emperor of the world. He almost succeeded. But the countries of Europe joined forces and defeated him. Human rights was again a hot topic. They drew up international agreements, broadly granting many rights across Europe. But only across Europe. The rest of the world somehow still didn't qualify. Instead, they got invaded, conquered, and consumed by Europe's massive empires. But then a young lawyer from India decided enough was enough. His name was Mahatma Gandhi, and in the face of violence, he insisted that all people of Earth had rights, not just in Europe. Eventually, even Europeans started to agree. But it wasn't going to be that easy. Two world wars erupted. Hitler exterminated half the Jewish population of Earth in horrifying Nazi death camps. And all told, 90 million people died. Never had human rights been so terrifyingly close to extinction. 
and never had the world been more desperate for change. So the countries of Earth banded together and formed the United Nations. Their basic purpose was to reaffirm faith in fundamental human rights, in the dignity and worth of the human person. But what were human rights? Were they the proclamations of Cyrus, the natural laws of Rome, the declarations of France? Everyone seemed to have a slightly different idea of what human rights should be. But under the supervision of Eleanor Roosevelt, they finally agreed on a set of rights that applied to absolutely everyone. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The French concept of natural rights had finally become human rights. So, in summary, at first, only a few lucky people had any rights, until one of those guys decided, hey, other people should have some rights too, which was great, except not everyone agreed, and it only took a few thousand years of fighting and declarations and more fighting until everyone finally agreed that human rights should apply to everyone. And they all lived happily ever after. Except for one little problem. If people have the right to food and shelter, why are 16,000 children dying of starvation every day? One every five seconds. If people have freedom of speech, why are thousands in prison for speaking their minds? If people have the right to education, why are over a billion adults unable to read? If slavery has truly been abolished, why are 27 million people still enslaved today? More than twice as many as in 1800. The fact is, when it was signed, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights did not have the force of law. It was optional. And despite many more documents, conventions, treaties, and laws, it's still little more than words on a page. So the question is, who will make those words a reality? I have a dream today. When Dr. King marched for racial equality, he was marching for rights that had been guaranteed by the United Nations for almost two decades. But still, he marched. When Nelson Mandela stood up for social justice in the 1990s, his country had already agreed to abolish such discrimination for almost 40 years. But still, he fought. Those who fight today against torture, poverty, and discrimination are not giants or superheroes. They're people, kids, mothers, fathers, teachers, free-thinking individuals who refuse to be silent, who realize that human rights are not a history lesson. They're not words on a page. They're not speeches or commercials or PR campaigns. They are the choices we make every day as human beings. They are the responsibility we all share to respect each other help each other and to protect those in need. As Eleanor Roosevelt said, where after all do universal human rights begin? In small places close to home. So close and so small that they cannot be seen on any maps of the world. Yet they are the world of the individual person, the neighborhood he lives in, the school or college he attends, the factory farm or office where he works. Such are the places where every man, woman, and child seeks equal justice, equal opportunity, equal dignity without discrimination. Unless these rights have meaning there, they have little meaning anywhere. Everyone, this is Jam, your host for today's episode. After a glimpse of the so-called human rights, let's zoom in to women's human rights. On August 14, 2009, Republic Act 9710, or otherwise known as the Magna Carta of Women, was passed. The Magna Carta of Women seeks to eliminate discrimination through the recognition, protection, fulfillment and promotion of the rights of Filipino women, especially those belonging to the marginalized sectors of the society. 
This was a realization of the Philippine government's commitment to the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women's Committee in 2006 and to the United Nations Human Rights Council in 2009. The law very well defines gender discrimination, state obligations, substantive equality, and temporary special measures. It also recognizes human rights guaranteed by the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. But what does women's rights mean to people from different walks of life? Let's listen to them. Um, with regards to women's rights in sports, there is an unfair portrayal of the inequality in gender. Bakit separate yung divisions? Bakit sa market mas may kita na maraming binibenta equipment for men than women? Pero dahil nga dun sa sabi ng babae lang, eh, nalilisan yung self-confidence natin at minsan nawawala na din tayo ng gana na ipakita kung ano talaga yung talento natin or skills natin sa sports. Kaya ito yung masasabi ko. Hindi lang kami babae. Babae ka. Research shows us that there is a proven link between gender equality and building respectful relationships between men and women. By making local sports more accessible and welcoming to women, the associated health benefits will flow through the whole community. And one of the best solutions for this is to support women's or girls' sports as a fan or player. Attend women's sports games at all levels. Avoid sexist language and communications for women's. And to hire more female sports executives. I do believe in gender equality. So, kahit saan man yan, kasama na yung sports. So, sa sports, um, mapalalaki ka or mapababae ka, uh, kailangan uh, we should receive equal treatment, equal benefits, equal rights, equal opportunities, equal recognition. No? Uh, hindi, hindi na dito binab- dapat ba- ibabase sa kung anong kasarian ka. Ayun. So, lalo na sa panahon ngayon, nagiging common na yung mga babae players natin. No? Whether it in basketball, in boxing, and other sports. So, uh, narapat lamang na uh, paigtingin natin yung equal rights, no? lalo na sa sports. As a female athlete, I believe that it is my right to be treated fairly in the field of competition. Receiving enough support during trainings and competitions is one of my rights as a female athlete. I think women should be given equal opportunity to play whatever sports they want to play, same as with men. One of a child's most basic right is to be able to play and have a good, healthy body. Engaging in sports is one way to do this. Sports gives an avenue for fun and enjoyment while at the same time giving the body its much-needed physical exercise. Safety is utmost importance, however, so it is important to observe this. This can be achieved to standard sports facilities and proper sports gears and play venues. Sufficient knowledge on sports safety is also of paramount importance. The practice of physical education, physical activities in sports, is a fundamental right for all. It can improve our health and reduce the risk of developing several diseases. Besides the fact that sports keep our body healthy, sports also enriches our psychological and social life. We need at least basic knowledge during sports. Public parks, schools, universities, or sports facilities are some places to be physically active for young people and adults. And also, a good sport coach should help us implement change and achieve our desired goals. I believe that there should be gender equality when it comes to sports. The same opportunities and amount of respect that were being given to male athletes should be also given to female athletes. And naniniwala din ako na dapat mas maging malawak pa yung media coverage and exposure ng women's sports para mas malawak yung ma-reach out nila mga kababaihan and para mas ma-encourage yung ibang mga babae na mag-participate. Sa kasalukuyang pandemya na hindi pinapayagan ang mga tao sa labas, 
ang mga kababaihan, especially ang mga senior citizen. Para bata namin magkaroon ng pasilidad na pagdadausa ng aming eresisyo, lalo na ng mga kababaihan at kabataan. So guys, we heard them speak their minds. Now let's listen to the inspiration and state policy in relation to the Magna Carta from Kwentong Sport. Ang aking ibabahaging kwento sa inyo ngayon ay tungkol sa rights o karapatan ng mga kababaihan sa sport. Ito ay nakasaad sa isang batas na tinagari ang Republic Act 1917 o kilalang Magna Carta of Women. Alam niyo ba na ang Magna Carta of Women ay nilagdaan na batas ni Pangulong Gloria Macapagal Arroyo noong August 14, 2009? Pero, ano nga ba ang Magna Carta of Women? Ito ay isang batas para sa karapatang pantao ng kababaihan na naglalayong alisin ang diskrimasyon sa pamamagigitan ng pagbibigay proteksyon at pagkikilala ng mga karapatan ng kababaihang Pinoy. Ang batas na ito ay nagbibigay diin sa mga marginalized na sektor ng lipunan. Alam niyo ba na ang patakaran na alisin ang diskrimasyon laban sa kababaihan ay alinsunod sa Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination against women, alamin natin ang ilang mahalagang tampok sa batas na ito. Una, ang tiyaking pantay na pakikilahok at representasyon ng kababaihan sa gobyerno, pampolitika, mga pang-international na katawan, serbisyong sibil, at pribadong sektor. Ang Magda Carta of Women na ito ay naisiguraduhin na may pantay-pantay na oportunidad ang mga kababaihan na may kaugnayan sa edukasyon, pangkabuhayan, panglipunan proteksyon, militar at pulisya, at ang ating sektor, ang sport. Nais proteksyonan ng Magna Carta of Women ang mga magsasaka, maralita sa lungsod, mga katutubong kababaihan, mga may kapansanan, at mga matatandang kababaihan at batang babae. Muli, ito ang inyong Commissioner Kiram na walang sawang maghahatid ng kwentong kababaihan, kwento para sa kaalaman at karunungan sa sport. Not at your best? You may be dehydrated. You need the carry sweat. It replaces the electrolytes you've lost and helps you perform at your best. Be at your best with the carry sweat. We have invited distinguished women to shed light on every item of the Magna Carta of Women in Sports. Hi, I'm Dal Dicini de Guzman, National Coach for Swimming. I'd like to discuss with you my thoughts on the provision of incentives to help promote, support, and train women and girls in competitive and non-competitive sports. Now, I can only give insights for my sport, swimming, and how I think the LGUs, media, and private sectors can help. As an archipelago with thousands of islands, the love of water is inherent in most of us but we have failed to take advantage of our children's natural interest in swimming. Swimming for fun and recreation is good for most, but only a few get serious enough to take this to the next level and formalizing learning how to swim. And this happens only when there are support groups and facilities to encourage this interest. Family, community, school, and the government. In the Philippines, the focus in choice of which sport to promote, particularly in schools, is a bit biased. 
most schools have programs for basketball and volleyball. And in the Visayas region, where football is more popular, schools focus their resources here. And these sports are mostly male-dominated. Swimming is not given priority, even in private institutions, because the cost of having and maintaining a pool is quite expensive. But this is not impossible. We have a lot of potential, hopeful, and aspiring swimmers who just need the right break and the proper support to achieve excellence in their sport. Creating a deeper interest in swimming requires an added awareness of the nature of the sport. Unlike other sports which are land-based, swimming requires a specialized skill, that of being able to conquer the water. This is not an easy thing to do because of the fear associated with drowning. Swimmers who are at a competitive level need to train at least two hours a day every day. Some train twice a day. They need a proper venue to train in and highly, con highly trained coaches who can teach and guide them. Although we are surrounded by water, we have a distinct lack of swimming facilities. In promoting the sport, local government units can allocate their funds to build a pool or sports complex for the use of their constituencies. Schools can tie up with them in giving swimming lessons as part of their curriculum. To generate more interest in the sport, partnerships with public and private organizations to fund building swimming pools is a lucrative proposal given the funds needed to put up such facilities. Competitions are looked forward to by swimmers because it showcases their progress in swimming and gives them a gauge as to where they are in terms of their in terms of other swimmers. Right now, the DEPED only has the Palarong Pambansa, while LGUs have the Batang Pinoy. This annual event is not enough to encourage and motivate swimmers to do better in their sport. Most competitions are hosted by swim clubs or private organizations, but the reach is limited. Swimming is a sport that does not have gender-biased concerns because progress is measured individually. Male and female swimmers have different target times per age level. The major restriction that they have is the lack of access to pursue their dream. Having more female coaches can encourage more girls to participate because they can serve as role models to, hope, to young hopefuls. In general, they also understand a girl's needs and limitations better. We have a lot of potential female swimmers who can compete at the international level. For the lucky ones, they can get sponsors to study and train abroad. Those who are gifted and have the potential but not enough support, steps have to be made to give them access to opportunities. And this is where our institutions can make the difference. In this era, it is indeed and in fact essential to greet the empowered, thought-provoking, and determined women. But I would like to give special greetings towards women who are sports enthusiasts. It is because women in sports are the paragon of strength and beauty. We portray gratefulness and we embody force and firmness. I was inspired by the word of God in Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. It says, Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. My life is a testimony that the Magna Carta for women is being practiced and observed properly. To be given an equal rights, to be a leader, director, manager, coach, trainer, speaker, advisor, and officiating official in sports and in academia alike is a manifestation 
of fair vertical rights and freedom of women in our present society. The continuous programs of women in sports is a great catalyst to boast my competence to become more passionate and aggressive to fulfill my heart's desires in helping our youth through sports. The Bible tells us to treat each other without partiality. God doesn't favor one person over another in Romans 2, 11. Rather, he taught us to love your neighbor as yourself in Matthew 22, 39. I am so grateful to tell that there is a fair treatment to women athletes in implementing the sports program and scholarship in the Isabella State University where I belong. There is no discrimination observed at all. Our university president, Dr. Rickmar Aquino, and all officials of our university fully supported all sports programs in our university. They even exposed our athletes to participate in all sports programs conducted by the Philippine Sports Commission for them to experience the higher level of competitions. Not only that, they also so encourage all faculty and staff, men and women, to get involved in sports competitions here and abroad. The impact of our brilliant and versatile international speakers influenced me to accept challenges beyond my personal limitations and to open the door of new discoveries of my potentials as a leader. It is now my duty to fulfill and keep my, command, my commitments last March 16 during our Women Empowerment Leadership. And that is to encourage, motivate, and inspire women to get involved in sports, to duplicate or even triplicate the effort to train our youth in obtaining a well-balanced life through sports. Rise up. Shape up women in the Philippines. Let us go to the region beyond to encourage our youth to involve in sports and teach them the biblical principle to build a better life through sports. I think there's a significant benefit of having a female coach or a female mentor in a female team. I think this makes it easier for girls to take part in. Um, girls would less, they would feel less intimidated, and they won't worry that they'll be judged or something. Uh, also, having female coaches can open doors as girls are more likely to take part in. I think creating an all-female environment can help girls. Uh, feel more comfortable and confident um, in themselves. I also think that having female, well, as a female coach myself, no, I can relate to problems or issues that uh, girls face or they encounter, like, um, for example, peer pressure or confidence in themselves and also, like, uh, having periods or <laughs> your menstruation. So these challenges can actually affect our athletes' performance. So having someone that works around these issues, um, they can, I or we as female coaches uh, can provide the need of female athletes. So also uh, having female coaches can also change the perception of gender stereotypes that coaching is for males only because probably on in my experience also kasi nga medyo, uh, coaching is male dominated um, they look at at female coaches are as more emotional or more compassionate or affectionate whereas male coaches are more assertive or dominant, I think female coaches are, are can be compassionate 
and at the same time assertive. Good morning to all empowered women of today's generation. Special mention to the Women in Action of Buena Vista National High School, the Vashine of Escalante City. Today, I will be sharing about Republic Act Number 9710, known as the Magna Carta of Women, which expressly states in Section 17, Letter G, that all government agencies and LGUs are enjoined to increase women's participation by forming women's and girls' teams in various sporting events that they organize or sponsor. All government agencies and local government units play a vital role in increasing women's participation in various sporting events that they organize or sponsor. Hence, power and confidence of women in the community will boast. This program will provide an avenue to showcase women's strengths and capabilities in sports, physically, socially, mentally, and even emotional aspect. This will also break the idea that women will always be behind us knowing that women have a big role in the society. So this program will not only provide opportunity for women to portray their capabilities and expertise in terms of sports, but will also balance the environment of sports since in the usual scenario, more men are visible in any form of sports discipline. Sports is one of the great drivers of gender equality. Women in sports defy gender stereotypes and social norms, enabling them to inspire others and be role model. So it is one way of promoting men and women equality. Participation in sports aims to build self-confidence to women who have insecurities and have low self-esteem. So this will empower women to balance themselves in every aspect of life. This gives them an idea that women are always part and parcel of communities' progress and betterment. So this Magna Carta for Women is backed by Republic Act 7192, Women in Development and Nation Building Act, which promotes the integration of women as full and equal partners of men and development and nation building. So in Buena Vista National High School, we are encouraging our uh, women to be part of the combat sports who are joining combat sports. Most of our uh, women teacher are coaching combat sports, particularly in Pinchaxila, Taekwondo. And we are joining also in uh, bowl games such as basketball and volleyball. So we're not only empowering our students to participate in uh, sports, but also our teachers who will be also participating in a coaching particular athletic and uh, bowl games, including the combat sports. So in our case, it encourage namin yung mga babae to participate and to be acknowledged as partners of men in the development and nation building. So in the level of, in our school level, so encourage women to be participative in the different sporting events. Hindi lang parang nako-confine yung babae na sa bahay ka lang. Uh, for example, yung sa basketball, pang lalaki yan, hindi pwedeng sasali yung mga babae. But in our school, girls' team are really participating. Okay, the support of the local government units and agencies to the formation of girls' and women's team is very important for our children and for our women's team to be active in participating in sporting events. But if we try to scrap that mentality, parang ano, bigyan natin ng puwang yung kababayan na show your skills. Ipakita mo yung kakayahan mo. You are not only a woman that be confined in your room. So parang dapat empowered women kayo. Alam nyo na may kakayahan kayo not only in doing a uh, clerical job, you have that capacity to participate in combat sport. You have that capacity to join in any sporting events. So, sasali ka, i-equip mo yung sarili mo, i-expose mo yan. You have to discover your hidden talents. You have to discover yourself. Know uh, your interest. Pag mahilig ka sa volleyball, mahilig ka sa basketball, then go. Hindi yung 
Kasi minsan yung notion natin na pag babae, huwag kang sasali nun sa basketball, mainit doon. Iitim ka, papangit ka. So we should allow our students to express what they love to do. So kung mahilig sila dun sa sporting events, mahilig sila dun sa bowl games, so let us support them. We are blessed here in Buena Vista National High School that our principal is very supportive to our women athletes. And also we are very blessed that our city mayor here in Escalante City is very supportive to the uh, women's athlete. Section 17 of the Implementing Rules and Regulations of Republic Act 9710 or the Magna Carta of Women states that the state shall develop, establish, and strengthen programs for the participating of women and girl children in competitive and non-competitive sports as a means to achieve excellence, promote physical and social well-being, eliminate gender role stereotyping, and provide equal access to the full benefits of development for all persons regardless of sex, gender identity, and other similar factors. It is further stated that all sports-related organizations shall also ensure the safety and well-being of all women and girls participating in sports by providing them comprehensive health and medical insurance coverage as well as integrated medical, nutritional, and health care services. We in the Philippine Sports Commission make that happen. The PSC Philippine Sports Institute Medical and Scientific Athlete Services Unit provide our female athletes the medical, nutritional, and even psychological support that they need. We have doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, massage therapists, nutritionists, strength and conditioning coaches, and even sports scientists who are available 24-7 to ensure that they are given the proper care that they need in order for them to perform at their best, just like their male counterparts. After all, PSC believes in gender equality and women empowerment. Aside from these, seminars for women in sports are being conducted by PSC on a regular basis to enrich the knowledge of our female athletes and coaches on different topics related to women and sports, such as hydration and nutrition, opportunities in modern grassroots and children's sports development, reproductive health awareness, success secrets of world-class athletes, gender sensitivity, gender equality, gender mainstreaming analysis, and of course, women empowerment. We also have women's leadership training and coaching seminars because we believe that women can be great leaders as well as excellent coaches. My topic is the value and importance of partnership in community-based sports. I am grateful and fortunate that our Governor Matthew Marcos Manoto is supportive in our endeavor to develop and promote a sporting culture in Ilocos Norte. With the mindset, salun at asigurado umili productivo, meaning healthy, vibrant, and resilient community. His support to sports development started during his term as senior board member when he authored the athletic scholarship program granting a monthly stipend to athletes who exhibited merit of excellence in sports performance. Majority of our athletic scholars are girls. He also supported the development of the Ilocos Norte Sports Institute and Research, the INSPIRE, and the rehabilitation of a modern sports development training center that is ongoing construction. His support has encouraged me to inject and strengthen women in sports at Ilocos Norte and to formulate a marketing portfolio and the branding of Ilocos Norte into a marketing tool that will provide us partners to sustain our sports development programs. To give you an overview of Ilocos Norte sports, it is divided into four elements. One, the grassroots sports development program. Two, 
sports tourism, three, sports recreation and facilities, and four, women in sports. Projects under the Grassroots Sports Development Program. There is the sports clinic, talent identification, training camp, and long-term athletes development. There is also the coaches and technical officials enhancement training for coaching licensure and technical officiating accreditations by NSAs. We have the sports medicine and nutrition research development. We have Maki M3, Masigla Masayang Mama Mayan. It is a barangay-based sports activity that involves the family in a physical fitness and wellness program together. And we also have the Ilocos Norte Universities and Colleges Athletic Games. Uh, events for sports tourism, we have Ilocos Norte Dragon Boat Festival that has helped us develop canoe-kayak athletes. So they are now training with the Philippine national team. Three of them are girls. Then we also have the Tri Ilocos Norte or the Tin Man. It is a triathlon event that has earned the 2019 Sports Event of the Year given by the Sports Tourism Award. We also have Tour de Ilocos Norte and we are now starting uh, developing beach volleyball to be partner with the resort owners and we, have, we plan to have a Sports Tourism and Facilities Forum. For sports recreation and facilities, we have the bike zip line of Bintar, we have the 4x4 race at Sand Dunes, and we are now into development of surfing for Pagod Pud. For women in sports, we have basic self-defense for women. We have the Sumba Capitol that is undertaken three times a week for women to fight obesity. And also, we are proposing for a scholarship program to women who will take physical education as a major. As we celebrate Women's Month, with the cooperation of the Gender and Development Office, Miss Janet London implemented the basic self-defense for women in eight local government units. So going back to the value and importance of partnership in community-based sports, as the Ilocos Norte Sports Development Officer, with the support of Mr. Faibo Bartolome, our Sports Development Consultant, we have taken the initiative to outsource funding with the marketing tools to draw the interest of the corporate community and non-government sector, both local and international group, to joint venture with the provincial government of Ilocos Norte in developing our athletes achieve their full potential and to craft Ilocos Norte as the sporting hub in Northern Luzon. We are looking forward that the partnership program for sports development will provide us result in our pursuit to sports excellence and will institute a legacy to the Ilocano athletes. So lastly, I am inviting you to visit Ilocos Norte. Just Agnina. Thank you very much for the insightful sharing. We really got the rights. Before we end this very awakening information on our rights as women in sports, we have invited Attorney Grace Marpuri to summarize for us the highlights of this law that seek to protect women in sports. Take it away, Attorney Grace. Thank you for inviting me to present to you the highlights for salient features of the Magna Carta of Women in the Philippines or the so-called 9710, particularly on the provision of the rights of women in sports. Talking about 9710, it is a comprehensive human uh, rights law for women that seeks to eliminate discrimination against women by recognizing and protecting, fulfilling, and promoting the rights of all Filipino women. We are all witness to the realities that women have been fighting for equality all throughout history. In sports, specifically, women were once not even permitted to watch the Olympic Games. 
after finally being permitted to participate in sports, women at one time had to undergo gender testing to make sure that they were not men trying to cheat the system. Even though the 21st century is supposed to be a time where everyone is equal, there are still many obstacles women have to overcome in order to be treated just as the male athletes do. Women have realized this inequality and started conventions that, that discuss how women need to support each other in sports. These conventions also help girls and women to be empowered and have confidence and eventually become great leaders in their life. Overcoming these obstacles help the women grow and become a stronger human being. The Magna Carta of Women in the Philippines is a big step to the realization of gender equality and equality in the country. It is actually the guarantee in our constitution, the very supreme law of the land, that women should be protected, to be treated equally, and be given opportunity with others. Even our international convention, which the Philippines is a member, have an advocacy that all women should not be discriminated, should be afforded equal treatment and opportunity in all aspects. Likewise, our laws have recognized that women played an important role in nation building. Many laws have been passed and enacted primarily to recognize women empowerment and their protection. Women have been recognized as among the marginalized sector that should be given importance and be afforded with rights and be given, if not deserve, equal treatment. Sadly, despite of all these efforts in the field of sports, records show that more than 60 national sports associations recognized by the Philippine Sports Commission or the PSC, only 32 of them have female coaches. Also, there have been an alarming low representation of women coaches in the national pool. On record, actually, female coaches comprise about 14 to 17 percent of the total coaches population from 2016 to 2020. So the Magna Carta of Women in Sports contains women in sports rights. Knowing this, by all concerned stakeholders, we hopefully address some issues, concerns, and gaps in women's sports in the century. Sadly, despite of all these efforts in the field of sports, record shows that of the more than 60 national sports association recognized by the PSC or the Philippine Sports Commission, only 32 of them have female coaches. Also, there have been an alarmingly low representation of women coaches in the national pool. On record, female coaches comprise about 14 to 17% of the total coaches population from 2016 to 2020. So the Magna Carta of Women in Sports contains women's in sports rights. Knowing this, by all concerned stakeholders, we'll hopefully address some issues, some concerns and gaps in women in sports in the country. Join me to check on the provisions of this beautiful law for us women, the RA 9710. There are about several paragraphs that was provided containing comprehensively our rights as women in sports. Starting off with section 14, the women in sports, the state shall develop, shall establish and strengthen the programs for the participation of women and, gir and girl children in competitive and non-competitive sports as a means to achieve excellence, promote physical and social well-being, eliminate gender role stereotyping, and provide equal access to the full benefits of development for all persons, regardless of sex, gender identity, and other similar factors. For this purpose, all sports-related organizations shall create guidelines that will establish and integrate affirmative action as a strategy and gender equality as a framework in planning and implementing their policies, budgets, programs, and activities relating to the participation of women and girls in sports. To this date, these guidelines on gender equality are yet to be established. In fact, last week, the Board of the, Board of the Philippine Sports Commission approved a milestone policy that all NSA, number one, maintaining women events whose training program is fully or partially subsidized by the PSC, must endeavor to include at least one female coach in its coaching pool, particularly to handle female athletes during training and competitions. 
And another policy approved by the Philippine Sports Commission is, are, is that NSA, which are yet to comply with this policy, are given six months from the issuance of this regulation as a preparatory period to select, train, and include in its coaching pool a female coach to handle female athletes. In relation to this, female athletes participating in any international competition must be accompanied and handled by at least one female coach. Section 70, paragraph B of the IRR of 9710 also provides that no sports events or tourna tournament will offer or award a different sport prize with respect to its amount or value to women and men winners in the same sports category, provided that the said tournament, contest, race, match, event, or game is open to both sexes, and provided further that the sport event or tournament is divided into male or female divisions. If we check on Republic Act, um, 10699 and uh, expanding the coverage of incentive granted to national athletes and coaches, the declared policy of this law is to promote excellence in sports by looking after the welfare of nation, national athletes and coaches competing for the country and by providing benefits and incentives for national athletes and other athletes who win in international sports competitions and bring honor to the, and recognition to the country. Section 17 of the IRR of the Magna Carta of Women, paragraph 3, provides that all sports-related organizations shall also ensure the safety and well-being of all women and girls participating in sports, especially but not limited to trainees, reserve members, members, coaches, mentors of national sports teams, whether in studying, training, or performing phases by providing them comprehensive health and medical insurance coverage, as well as integrated medical, nutritional, and healthcare services. The Philippine Sports Commission, or the PSC, has since its birth have been taking care of and funding the safety and well-being of all women and girls in the national pool. It is also mandated that all sports organizations down there in the grassroots shall take care of the well-being of their women and girl athletes. On the same IRR, Section 17, Paragraph it also provides that schools, colleges, universities, or any other learning institution shall take into account its total women student population in granting scholarship. There are also a pro rata representation of women in the athletic uh, scholarship program based on the percentage of women in the whole student population. Given that the sports and inter-university and colleges sports-related competitions are gaining popularity nowadays, we believe that there are universities who are very generous of this and have given non-monetary incentives to their athletes. Section 17 of the IRR provides that the PSC or the Philippine Sports Commission, the G GAB, DepEd, JED, SUCs, LUGs, LGUs, and other sports-related organizations shall endeavor to train more female coaches for girls and women's team to form more girls and women's team in athletic leagues or games. We are yet to see a bright outlook of this provision, but at least the PSC policy is a baby step towards the growth in number of female coaches and female athletes. There's also a provision in the IRR that the PSC and the Game and Amusement Board shall provide financial and other incentives to local government units, media organizations, and the private sector for promoting training and preparing women and girls in participation in competitive and non-competitive sports, especially in local and international events, including but not limited to the Palorong Pambansa, to the Southeast Asian Games, Asian Games, and the Olympics. The Magna Carta of Women pushed the PSC, GAB, DepEd, SHED, SUCs, and other sports-related organizations in providing travel grants of women leaders, coaches, and athletes with adequate support mechanism, and also to provide sufficient funds to support girls and women in sports. The law also provides for the Philippine Sports Commission, the Gaming and Amusement Board, DepEd, CHED, LGUs, and other sports-related organizations to endeavor to collect sex-disaggregated data in sports participation. The global sports analytics market size is expected to reach 
at 4.6 billion US dollars by 2025, expanding at the compounded annual growth rate of 31.2%, according to a new study by Grandview Research Incorporated. Increasing preference for sports as a career option, coupled with the growing demand for tracking and monitoring live data of players expected to drive the market growth. The use of analytics in sporting events help different stakeholders, including sports person associations and fanatics to give in-depth insights of the live in-game activity as well as the past game events. The law also contains that the PSC or the GAB, DepEd, SUC, SUCs, LGUs, and other sports-related organizations shall endeavor to promote partnerships with community-based sports organizations. And lastly, the Philippine Sports Commission, Game and Amusement Board, the DepEd, CHED, SUCs, LGUs, and other sports-related organizations shall endeavor to increase the participation of the women with disabilities and indigenous women through the promotion and development of programs for them. Given all the above provisions, there have been a lot of government efforts, particularly the PSC or the Philippine Sports Commission, to advocate and promote the participation of women in sports. This discussion is just a piece of the pie of the Magna Carta of women. Of course, there have been a lot of provisions and areas that would champion and advocate to ensure that women's rights are protected. Women that should not be discriminated and should be provided equal treatment, afforded same opportunity with others, and women are empowered. And most importantly, we are recognized to be part of the nation building. Again, thank you for inviting me to this short session. And have a good day ahead. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you, Attorney Grace. And about to set a record once again, a new record, Christina Marina on the Philippines. It is so wonderful to know that we are now protected by this Magna Carta of women. So to our women athletes, don't fail to exercise your rights. To the moms out there, it is time to encourage your daughters to get into sports. To the leaders in the communities and local government units all over the Philippines, grab this mandate to push your programs forward. To the women sports mentors and teachers in the academe, be the key to create more girl teams, more athletes, and women coaches. To the top executive in sports organizations, in the government and private sector, please have an equal seat for men and women in your board. That way, the more than 50 million Filipino women and girls from Aparito Holo would be very happy to see women in sports grow and to watch more Filipino women champions in the world arena of sports. For this week's Rise Up, Shape Up. Thank you everyone for your support. Rise Up, Shape Up is brought to you by the Philippine Sports Commission Women in Sports as a campaign to women and girls to bring back their vigor and active lifestyle, especially during this pandemic times. We would like to thank our partner PAC4 and our event sponsor, Pokari Sweat. We'd also like to acknowledge the PSC Board of Commissioners, Chairman William I. Ramirez, Commissioners Arnold Agustin, Ramon Fernandez, Celia Kiram, and Charles Raymond Maxi. See you next week for a special episode that features the launch of the Zumbarangay Filipinas Solo On Cam Challenge. Meantime, don't forget to follow us on our social media channels. Again, have a marvelous day, everyone! Rise up and save us. Rise up and save us.